psychological trauma, working through the fear, working through their anxiety of, of where they were, what they saw, what they heard. And for parents to really be there for their students, to listen to their fears, listen to what they were going through, and be prepared to help them any way possible. Hey, Adam, uh, before we let you go, we are looking at live pictures. This is a neighborhood here. This is a street, Sycamore Creek uh, Drive, where we've seen SWAT and a lot of police activity just outside of a home. What's going on right now? I know you're not working this investigation, but when you hear of SWAT, when you hear of a large uh, amount of police presence in a neighborhood surrounding a home, you got to think the police are onto something, especially the suspect. Yeah, anytime you see any tactical team mobilized or a SWAT team mobilized, uh, chances are they're probably close to where this person is or what's going on. And so it could be anything from a barricaded uh, situation where they perhaps they've made contact and the person's refusing to come out. So we're going to look at hostage negotiators. We're going to look at setting up a perimeter, making sure that this area is contained so that this person does not get out of, <laughs> of the area. Um, or, you know, it could be a false alarm. It could have something that, you know, maybe they're surrounding a house that maybe nobody's in because they thought that, you know, the person ran in and, in fact, they're already gone. Um, but there's probably pretty good information that the person is in this area, uh, maybe at this house, and they're taking all the tactical measures necessary to not only keep the officers safe but to keep the community and the neighbors safe around it until they can confirm that this person's inside or not and how they're going to remove the person from the house. Thank you so much, right, Adam, Adam Cochran. Thank you. We are going to talk to a parent now who was dropping off their child at school. They don't want to identify themselves. I totally understand what a traumatic morning it's been. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yeah, uh, no problem, I guess. Can you tell us what, what you saw and what you witnessed? Uh, yeah, I was, like you said, I was about to drop my son off. And as it happens every morning, you know, there's a line of cars waiting to get to a point to where you can drop off your kids and was waiting in that line, uh, noticed people leaving. First it was like one or two kids and then four or five and then more and more uh, and not knowing what's going on, couldn't hear anything, couldn't see anything. Uh, luckily we saw a friend of my son's uh, who was walking away from campus. He got our attention, spoke to him for a brief second and he said, there's a shooter, don't go to school. So, um, and there's a, another friend of ours who lives fairly close to the school, so the kids were kind of going to that house. Um, so I sent the kids there, told them to get inside and lock the door, and then went towards the school just to see if there was anything I could see or do to help, if there was any other kids that I could recognize and get them out of there. Um, started calling family family members whose kids go to the school as well, make sure everyone was safe and sound, let them know, don't come, you know, stay away if you're not here. So this was at the, the, the start of school. What time does classes uh, start there at the high school? It depends on if you have a first period or not. If you have a first period, it starts at like 7. Otherwise, school starts at uh, 7.45, 7.50. Wow, so if you have a first period starting at 7 a.m. and the shooting happened at 7.30, a number of students were already on campus around uh, 7.30. If you can, how are your kids doing uh, right now? My my kids are fine. We were in no danger at all. Like I said, we, we, we weren't even on campus, and the friends that I've been able to speak to, their kids are fine as well, thankfully. Um, just concerned about the, those that were involved. And the kids, you know, of course, kids do talk. Uh, have your kids or any of the students that you may have spoken with, have they said any, anything about them possibly knowing who the suspect is? No, no. Um, they, the only people that were even on campus when it happened that I've spoken to said they heard noise. They heard uh, at first a single pop and then multiple pops and saw people running and just ran. Uh, what a what a scary morning on the left side of our screen right now. We just want to let viewers know what they're looking at. These are students at Saugus High being taken to buses. If you have kids at Saugus High, they are doing they are making they are taking measures to make sure the kids get off campus. There's also that central meeting point at uh, the park, the reunification center. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get kids off campus because the active shooter is still out there. Of course, um, you're going to have to deal with the fallout after this. Even though your kids are fine physically, it's also the emotional fallout. Have you even thought about how your family is going to deal with this? I haven't gotten that far into it yet. Um, like I said, my son was safe and nowhere near it. Uh, friends of ours that were there and, and involved or, or seen things or whatever, I, I have no idea how you bounce from this and how you tell your kids it's safe and 
go back to school and everything's fine. So tell me uh, this, like have it. you had the conversation, you know, with your kids even leading up to this point that a possibility to, like, something like this could happen, especially with, you know, drills across the country now in high schools and elementary schools? Yeah, um, and just kind of to try to teach them to to be aware of their surroundings and if they see something or if, even if they just feel something is weird, don't just shake it off and pay attention to it and Put yourself somewhere where you're safe. If you've got friends around you, get them somewhere where you're safe. Talk to an adult and let them know, hey, you know, something's weird over there. You might want to go check. It's, the world's not a an exactly kind place anymore, and I don't know what we do to keep kids safe, but I know that the sheriff's department responded uh, immediately. The uh, fire department and paramedics responded immediately within within. I don't know, minutes of my being there, there had to have been 15 different emergency vehicles flying up the street, parking, getting out, and immediately running into to campus without any thought or, or concern for anything other than getting in and figuring out what to do. So, you know, the responders are trained. They know what they're doing. They, they do their job unbelievably well. Um, other than the safe and... You know, abide by what the emergency responders tell you, 